No, thank, thank you very much. That was, a, that was a great panel. I really appreciated that. Thank you very much. Well, now I, I have the uh, esteemed pleasure to introduce the Governor Martin O'Malley, uh, whose commitment to uh, growth of biotechnology in the state has been unwavering right from the start of his governorship. It was truly fitting that uh, Governor O'Malley was lauded last month as the 2010 Governor of the Year by the Biotechnology Industry Organization. He has super, superlatively enhanced and expanded Maryland as the nation's most vibrant biotech cl cluster. His $1.3 billion Maryland Bio 2020 initiative is one example of his commitment. Uh, Governor O'Malley uh, is a national leader in striving for business environments that collaborate seamlessly with research universities and other institutions. He has demonstrated his confidence in growing Maryland's technology incubator network and increasing technology transfer, among, among other initiatives. Um, at the uh, University of Maryland, the state's contributions with MTech, as we heard earlier, in venture creations and support have been very substantial. MIPS, for example. It served over 400 Maryland companies last year alone in accelerating commercialization of technology in Maryland. The governor has also supported several projects that are contributing to the growth of, of the biotech industry. The university opened a new biosciences research facility in 2007, which serves the Maryland Pathogen Research Institute. With the governor's backing, uh, DBED and the university are collaborating in the state's first in international incubator, as you heard earlier. The incubator is designed to spur economic growth, bring foreign direct investment to Maryland, provide a one-stop shop for foreign interests, and create jobs in the state. And most recently, the governor approved funding for the physical sciences complex at the university, as I mentioned earlier today. At the groundbreaking a week, ago, a week ago, Governor O'Malley called the $130 million project the number one capital priority of the O'Malley-Brown administration, for example. Uh, NIST, of course, is a physical, is, and the physical scientists there are deeply engaged in biotechnology at Maryland and in this Shady Grove Institute for Bioscience and Biotechnology Research. It's really a collaboration, again, between the University of Maryland, NIST, and, and UMB in Baltimore and industry. These types of investments are one reason why we are here today, because they also are, show why the Bureau of Labor Statistics lists the state of Maryland as the leader in tech sector job growth in 2009. The governor's record of commitment speaks for itself, but most fortunately, the governor is here today to speak to us directly. Please uh, join me in welcoming to the stage Governor Martin O'Malley. Thank you very, very much, and thank you, Mr. President, for that very, very kind introduction. I, I turned to uh, when you were rattling off some of those great uh, talking points and stats about Maryland leadership, Maryland excellence, Maryland leading all other states. I turned to our uh, able director of economic development. I said, "Get me that stat. Get me that stat." I think the, the panel's uh, discussion about our need to tell our own story is really, really important. You know, we are so, uh, we are so uh, blessed in many instances, but also we've achieved so much as a state, and yet we, we suffer sometimes as Marylanders with a pathological modesty. We don't, uh, we don't talk about ourselves as much. We think that the truth doesn't need defending or proclaiming, uh, but actually proclaiming those stories, telling that truth is a real important part of what it means to be able to achieve a better future because um, it's important that the rest of the, the world understands what we have here in Maryland because of each and every one of you. Uh, President Mo, thanks for your leadership at the university. There are really some great things happening at the University of Maryland. One of the top 10 best values of any public university in the United States of America under Dan Moat's leadership. And it was uh, fun being with you to uh, break ground on the physical sciences building. As long as I have been mayor, excuse me, governor. Um, <laughs> Well, actually, for a few years as mayor, I never traveled to the University of Maryland College Park without hearing about uh, the, uh, how shall we say, uh, urgent need 
uh, for a new physical sciences building. And to be able to actually break that ground and see that start to happen is, is uh, really exciting. Uh, Norm Augustine, thank you for all of your leadership for our country, for our state, and for telling Maryland's story. Uh, thank you for everything that you continue to do for us, uh, uh, really out there before anyone else on the importance of STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and, and math. Thanks for your service on the Regents. Thanks for, uh, I've enjoyed also serving with you on the Homeland Security Advisory Council. Uh, I also want to thank everyone from uh, BizNow for or organizing today's event and also for having the foresight uh, since it was organized in Montgomery County and you knew that I was traveling from Annapolis to tell me I needed to be here at 9 and schedule me to speak at 925. That was, <laughs> that too is vision. That too is planning. That too is an achievement. Uh, I thought that panel was great. I would like to have listened to the panel for the next half hour and, and uh, instead of listening to me, but I am on the schedule. So I, I do thank uh, David Mott. Uh, for all of your leadership here in Maryland, for what you continue to do, Daryl Pines, Tom School, Todd Gibney, Renee Winsky, Martha Conley, and the, and our, the moderator, um, uh, Craig Hunter, uh, or, or was that Jonathan Redgrave? Both. Did I miss one? I only saw one up here. Were there two up here? Oh, okay. Well, then I thank Jonathan and Craig both. And thank you to all of you. I think Renee Winsky probably said it best. Uh, we need each other in order to do this. We need each other in order to do this. Uh, it's great to join you in Rockville. Rockville, I'm not sure if you knew this, was uh, recently named um, uh, by none other than Bloomberg News as one of America's 10 best cities for startups. And uh, I, believe it was, I believe it was one of the only ones in the mid-Atlantic or maybe uh, on this side of the Mississippi. Uh, I grew up uh, not very far from here at all in a small log cabin Kettler brother just down the road <laughs> in Rockville. Coming here today I have to reorient myself with all of the amazing things going on the Metamune and this campus. I'm driving along the roads I used to take on a school bus to Lakewood Elementary with, that was all through rolling farms and countryside then so it's exciting to see everything that's happening. Our mission to move Maryland forward in these difficult times uh, is, uh, has to be focused, by necessity is focused, is every day focused on doing everything we can in our power to create jobs, to save jobs, and to retain jobs, and to uh, improve the conditions that allow businesses, uh, from family-owned businesses to large businesses, to create the jobs that are actually the things that strengthen and grow the ranks of our middle class. A family is, I mean, a family's home is the most powerful place in our state. But the only way to protect that power, protect that home, to grow our middle class is with jobs. Jobs of the present, jobs of the future, jobs that have a future because they make for all of us a better future. This I-270 technology corridor is central to our ability to unleash really the, the innovative capacity, the job creating, growth sustaining potential of Maryland's innovation economy. Uh, I had the opportunity a few months ago to attend the opening of Lockheed Martin's next gen cybersecurity facility. Uh, what a tremendous resource. And this region is increasingly becoming uh, a preeminent high technology hub with more than 35,000 people working in sectors like cybersecurity, telecom, and IT. Uh, the little-known uh, news release, although this crowd probably heard it and knew it, about a couple weeks ago on a Friday, the federal government leaked out that little bit of news that the Joint Cyber Command, 21,000 jobs, is going to be located, co-located in your state around Fort Meade and, and NSA. That's huge, huge economic news. It's security news, so don't tell anybody. <laughs> But it's huge, huge economic news for our state, uh, for that to be happening uh, and to be happening on this side of the Potomac, where so many positive things are happening in this corridor, the DNA Alley, which continues to be a global leader in life sciences. I wanted to share just a few words to you about Maryland's economy and about our continuing vision, a vision that you are helping uh, uh, come to fruition every day for advancing the life sciences here in Montgomery County and throughout our state. And I wanted to talk with you about that critically important tool for unlocking the job creating potential of innovation, uh, which is uh, along with the talents, the skills, the innovative capacity of our people and our quality of life, venture capital, venture capital. 
We still have a tremendous amount of work ahead of us. We also have a tremendous amount of potential and opportunity ahead of us. But, and uh, I see signs that we're actually starting to come out of this really miserable economic downturn, the biggest downturn since the Great Depression. And I see Maryland coming out of this ahead of many other states. And I wanted to share with you some good news. Thanks to the hard work and perseverance of businesses and, and, and workers in our corridor, in this corridor and throughout our state, we have actually, for the last two months in a row, had positive job creation in the state of Maryland. 36,000 new jobs on the positive side of that demarcation between losing jobs and creating jobs. And that's the first time that that's happened in about 16 months. Some more good news. Our unemployment rate actually decreased in the last reporting period, according to Bureau of Labor Statistics. It's now 24% um, uh, lower than the national rate. If you consider that we are also one of only eight states that defends a AAA bond rating, a seal of fiscal responsibility certified by all three of the major bond rating agencies, if you consider that for the second year in a row, your public schools, thanks to your investments and the hard work of teachers, parents, and administrators, have been named now, even in the midst of this downturn, for two years in a row by Education Week magazine as the best public school system of all 50 states in the United States of America. It is fair to say that compared to virtually any other state in the nation, that we have weathered this storm better than most and that we are in a position to come out of this stronger than all. But it will not happen automatically. The future is not a gift, it is an achievement, as one great American said, and we can only continue to move forward if we continue to make the oftentimes tough, the oftentimes difficult, the oftentimes short-term unpopular decisions that actually lead to long-term prosperity, economic growth, and greater opportunity. In other words, that make progress. And we have chosen in these tough times, as, um, uh, as your... Uh, uh, shared instrument, your state government, uh, to make tough decisions like the $5.6 billion in spending reductions. The size of your state government on a per capita basis is now smaller than it's been at any time since 1973. But at the same time, we've been able to protect the big, important long-term investments. Investments that make college uh, education more affordable for all. Uh, investments in our public schools. Investments like the increase in the biotechnology tax credit. We moved from $6 million last year to $8 million this year and, uh, so that we can help emerging bio companies create and save jobs and grow our economy. In addition to moving our state forward, we also, and uh, in order to move our state forward, we also created a new hiring tax credit. $5,000 for any business, large, medium, or small, that hires a Marylander off of the unemployment rolls and gets them back to work. Uh, we have also created a new small business loan guarantee fund to prime the pump of small business lending, Main Street lending, which has been slow to respond, and uh, we has, which has already provided $40 million in uh, guarantees, or rather guarantees that have been able to uh, uh, leverage $40 million in uh, loans to Maryland small businesses this fiscal year. Along with governors in 28 other states, we have also uh, requested of the Obama administration, and they have responded uh, by introducing a proposal that would allow uh, for $2 billion to be accessed by states that want to do this sort of priming the pump of small business lending uh, through their state guarantee funds. But our efforts to create and save jobs can only be successful if we continue to invest in our greatest talent, and that is our greatest assets, and that's the talent, skills, creativity, ingenuity of our people. And so to move our state forward, we have made record investments and we protect record investments in our public schools, including a 70% increase in school construction dollars here in Montgomery County. So our children who will fill your labs and businesses in a short period of time can actually go to their high schools in decent lab space and get the sort of skills that excite little boys and little girls' minds and make them realize that they could have a rewarding career in life sciences and technology. Once more, we're, we are, um, what's more rather, we are also putting a, a much renewed emphasis on reinvigorating STEM education in Maryland science, technology, engineering, and math, disciplines that we used to uh, be a preeminent among our peers in the world. And now we see other nations starting to move beyond our, 
our children. Uh, that's not fair to them. It's not good for, for the United States. And uh, uh, no state uh, is turned to more often in times of adversity than our state in showing the way forward. So I'm proud of the positive things that we're doing to up STEM education. Uh, there are examples throughout our state also of career and technical education being joined not with the, you know, not in a sort of widgets and uh, pottery sort of way, but with the technologies and the job and the career uh, skills of, of the present and the future joined with science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, some of our smaller counties are actually moving ahead and, and by leaps and, and bounds. Down in Charles County, we already have North Point, which is a, one of the best CTE schools in, in, the, uh, in the state, uh, high schools. But now we have provided funding so that they can create what will be, Norm, the very first aerospace high school this side of the Mississippi, uh, which is very, very exciting. And there's examples like that in high schools throughout uh, our state. We've also chosen a loan among the 50 states to freeze college tuition for not one year, two year, three years, but four years in a row. There's not another state that's been able to do that. One of the many effects, however, of this national recession is the drying up, as, ma as all of you know, of uh, substantial amounts of venture capital. And that's something we are determined to counter. Uh, we cannot become uh, uh, the, we cannot become the venture capital uh, a bank for, for our, our state or, or the country. But you know what? We can do something about it. We can push back. And it will come as... Um, uh, probably not a lot of news to anyone in this room that our life sciences sector saw a 26 percent decrease in venture dollars during the first quarter of this year. That's a pretty big hit. Our state ranks first among states now in federal research and development dollars per capita and second in the total amount invested here in those important endeavors annually. Uh, it must be our goal to convert more of those dollars into jobs and economic opportunity. Uh, to uh, David Mott's uh, point, uh, I have a meeting coming up very shortly with Francis uh, uh, Collins at NIH. We have to harness that tech technology transfer potential that too often we allow ourselves to be preeminent in research without making that research uh, find its uh, way across the street into the marketplace and into even greater job creation. Uh, venture capital is a very key, key ingredient. Uh, and it is unfortunately one of those ingredients that in the past Maryland has lagged a lot of other states in. I mean, when the Milken Institute did their ranking of our state in terms of our, potat our potential as a life science and biotechnology economy, they moved us up, even in the face of this recession, from fourth place to second. And we were number one in terms of what we invest in the talents, education, and skills of our people. But when it came to venture capital, uh, we weren't among the top three. Uh, we weren't, I think, even among the top five. And so today we're announcing an administrative and legislative initiative that we call Invest Maryland. It is aimed at creating a public-private partnership to fuel venture capital investment in Maryland's innovation economy, uh, such as Maryland bioscience companies. And we believe this initiative can spur the creation of thousands of jobs and secure a hundred million in venture capital to unlock hundreds of millions, perhaps even billions, in economic and future economic activity. How will it work? Insurance companies would be eligible for state-issued tax credits, and in turn, they would invest dollars today in Maryland's venture infrastructure. These credits would be deferred until 2015. A minimum of half of these investments would flow into the Maryland Venture Fund, a fund that has been very successful in the past, that has performed well in the past. The balance would flow into Maryland-based venture capital firms for the purpose of getting critical capital to Maryland businesses so that they can create jobs and advance innovations in fields like the biosciences. And we'll target, of course, a percentage of these funds for investments in women and minority-owned businesses, continuing uh, that progress that harnesses the diversity of a very, very talented uh, business and workforce. Uh, in fact, this year I think will be the first time in our state's history that we ever hit our 25 percent goal on MBE participation. Job creation progress depends on our ability to be leaders 
in innovation. It depends on our ability to make progress in innovation, even in the toughest of times. It depends on our ability to, to move the ball of innovation forward. The discoveries, the technologies, the innovation that are being advanced every day in businesses, laboratories, and companies here and throughout our state hold not only our, 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 our greatest promise in terms of our economic future, it also holds the greatest promise in terms of our ability to continue to be moral leaders of this world. To remake our economy while in the broader sense remaking our world. To create jobs while at the same time revolutionizing the way that we feed, that we fuel, and that we heal this increasingly challenged planet of ours. It's one of the great ironies of our times, isn't it? That the uh, immensity of the challenges that we face are the very things that are driving innovation in all of your walks of life and, and, and uh, in the corridors and, and hallways of your businesses, in the sphere of education and technology and life sciences, these endeavors that all of us are able to rightly count among Maryland's greatest competitive economic strengths, particularly in this corridor. As I close, I just wanted to sh share a couple of thoughts with you um, finally on, on li life sciences. Uh, we are well positioned. I mentioned the Milken Institute uh, increasing our ranking. The raw materials for that, and of course all are here in this corridor. We need to tell the story better. We need your help in telling that story better. But the human source resources, the business resources, the academic resources, and the federal resources, they are all here. We, set, we sit in the epicenter not only of cybersecurity, we sit in the epicenter of our country and of the world in a science and security corridor that is second to none. I mean, if you put Maryland together with D.C. and Virginia, you will not find a more innovative, creative, talented, forward-leaning, looking, and working place on the planet than our place, than this place. And what's more, we have America's most highly skilled workforce, including the highest concentration of PhDs, scientists, and engineers in America, right here in your state a result of the choices that we've made together to make the investments, investments today that determine our strength tomorrow, investments in public schools and higher education. As you well know, this I-270 corridor is one of the largest bioscience clusters in the nation, perhaps the world, NIH, Food and Drug Administration, and all the rest. To leverage our assets in I-270 and beyond, through, Maryland, uh, through our Maryland Bio 2020 initiative, we have committed to a 10-year, $1.3 billion state investment in life sciences. And we didn't put it on hold because times were tough. In fact, because times are tough, we believe that we can make even greater strides in making Maryland even more competitive to other states that are using these times as an excuse to slip back. In our state, we don't go back. We go forward. In tough times, we don't make excuses. We make progress. That's why we make the big investments in the physical sciences building. Not because times are easy, because times are tough. That's why we continue to make investments in stem cell research, even though other states are pulling back. Not because times are easy, but because times are tough, and we must. That's why we make investments in uh, increasing our biotechnology uh, tax credit. That's why this year we actually extended our R&D tax credit for another decade. Because times are easy? No, because times are tough. And this is what Maryland does best. We rise in times of adversity. I leave you today with the words of a great poet, Seamus Heaney, who said, so hope for a great sea change on the far side of revenge and believe that a farther shore is reachable from here. Believe in miracles and cures and healing wells. My friends, that farther shore is reachable, but it's only reachable if we continue to make the tough decisions necessary to move our state forward. And the great thing about the people of our state is we don't make excuses, we make progress. And by continuing to make the investments and choices that advance our innovation economy, we can continue to make job creating progress that will allow us to remake our economy and that will allow us to remake the world. I don't know what this next chapter look like, looks like. None of us can write it by ourselves. We indeed do need each other. And we, in fact, are going to write that next chapter together. Thank you all very, very much.